Hello, everybody. On this Friday, this third Friday, as you know, that we're doing first and third Fridays. I hope everybody is doing good. And what I'm going to do is share a few updates, and then we're going to continue in our series that we're doing. And I'm also got a few questions that were emailed in that need to be addressed and asked. So let's go ahead and do that. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was something that was recent. I mentioned this before, but if you want to check it out, OAN, which is One American News, it's very hard to find non-biased news. And they're a little biased, but you actually get some real news. You get national and you get some international news. So they reported on October 22nd this year, so last month, that the CDC reported. So this is not what I looked up somewhere. This was on international news that the CDC reports stats on COVID. I looked up a number of things by the CDC, and this is what all the doctors are upset about, is because the CDC keeps flipping and flopping on what they say. But the latest report says approximately 216,000 deaths at that time in the U.S., that 130,000 approximately were not related to COVID. This is what the CDC said. They were things like heart attacks, car accidents, stroke, cancer, on and on. Only 6% were actually COVID deaths, 6% of about 216,000. So that's approximately 12,000 people. Now, something I'd like for you to know is every year we get reports from the CDC estimating deaths from the seasonal flu. So in 2019, they always predict this because they have all the stats, right? That's what we've been counting on. And so in 2019, they predicted that there'd be about 60,000 deaths in the U.S. for the seasonal flu. Now, that means the winter uh, beginning at the end of 2019, but you can't count that. So you got to start January 1 and count the winter of 2020. And then when you get back around to the winter of 2020, you count that, that's 2020, that's 60,000 deaths. So <laughs> it's interesting that they didn't come up with many seasonal flu deaths. In January and February, that number was going up and up and up. But in March, when COVID hit, the numbers actually dropped because they shifted those numbers over to say that it was COVID. Interesting. And we still don't have much for the year of 2020 as we're ending it for seasonal flu regular deaths, which go up incrementally every year. Several things to think about. Now, if vaccines, oh, I was talking about vaccines again. If vaccines worked like they said, then why are the seasonal flu deaths going up every year when more and more people, if you look around, are getting vaccinated for the seasonal flu. And they are making a ton of money off of this. You see the revenue of it going way, way up. That means more and more people are getting vaccinated. So let's carry on here. Other people were compromised. In other words, the, the people that are remaining from the 130,000 and the 12,000, because if you add that that's like 142,000. So there's a gap there. So what were what was going on with the other people? They were people with compromised systems that you keep hearing about. Pre-existing health problems, serious problems, that one more thing in their life would tilt the scales leading to death, which COVID happened to be that. So whether it was kidney problems, heart problems, whatever else, and they died from those problems. They had complications with those problems, lungs, whatever it is, but they also had COVID. Then those go down as the missing numbers between 142,000 and 216,000. That's what the CDC said. So another tip, <laughs> I just had to mention this. I don't know, you probably are familiar with Elon Musk and all the news that was done on him by most publications, COVID, positive or negative, because Elon Musk was tested in cooperation with NASA. They required it. Elon Musk is a South African entrepreneur that is mostly known for uh, the creation of PayPal and many tech advances. Uh, with all that money that he had money, and then he made all that money, he created Tesla Motors, electric cars, SpaceX, independent uh, space program, 
and the Falcon rocket. These are things that actually come back and land themselves automatically. Also, electric jets, the Hyperloop, solar power systems, web-based phone calls. So what happened? On Saturday, November 14th, one swab up one nostril tested positive. I'm going to go ahead and give you the punchline because typically they don't swap both nostrils. Now they used a separate one. So in one nostril, they tested and with a separate swab, they tested the other nostril. And they came back that one side was positive and the other side was negative. I mean, come on. <laughs> so what is the result? Uh, the result is a joke. So just be aware of that with all the stuff that they talk about in the media I think the term now is disinformation. There's fake news, there's disinformation, and that's widely known. And I have something to recommend later to prove this from the top experts from their own mouth, from all of the, all of the top tech companies, for example. So most medical university studies report these rapid response tests only have up to a 50% accuracy rate. So what does that mean once he tested positive on one nostril and negative on the other nostril? You still don't know if he's positive or negative. Now, that was the rapid response test, one of the most used out there. The other one, which makes the two most popular promoted used tests, is the BD Veritor test. That is only 50% accurate as well. According to what? All the independent studies, mostly by medical universities. These are the two most used studies across the country. That one that I'm talking about, that was reported by Forbes, but I looked through and most every publication, all the top publications came out with a story the same day. I mean, it, it is a story, isn't it? So I have a recommendation. Sometimes I have recommended books, mostly different things. So this is something I'm going to recommend. I don't approve of every single thing that is said there by the different people, but I think it is very, very vital. It's called The Social Dilemma. It's a documentary. It's on Netflix. It's on YouTube. So if you don't have Netflix, you can just go on YouTube, or even on your computer and find it. It's in a lot of places and it's gaining Rapid popularity with tons of views. Social Dilemma highlights the problems behind big tech. And you're getting this not from naysayers or from outside people. Everyone on there, and there are many, are all of the top people in big tech. Some of them are the founders. Some of them are vice president. Some of them are head of the different areas for writing the programs for the algorithms, the artificial intelligence, the marketing. There's the psychological side that's looked at on and on and on. So what is this about? I can't tell you everything. Or I'd, I'd give it away and I won't give you some punchlines, but big tech all across the board, it is not what they meant it to be. It has evolved to something that has gotten completely out of control. And the artificial intelligence has gone way beyond what was imagined. Some comparisons or some people are thinking, you know, they're waiting till like the movie Terminator and stuff like that, where the machines and artificial intelligence is going to take over. They said, no, it's not like that. And in fact, it's already taken over. The artificial intelligence they've created has a mind of its own, creating its own ways of doing things that they don't fully understand. And it's not what they originally intended. The negative impact on society globally has resulted in controlling society globally without their knowledge. So if you're involved in this, this is talking about smartphones, computers, uh, social media, all of this big tech stuff. And you'll find that the leaders from all of them, Google, Twitter, Facebook, you know, just go right on down the line, Pinterest, all of those different things. You're going to hear from the leaders of what they say. And they're very, very concerned. And they're taking it before Congress, before the Senate, before different ones trying to get attention. And it's freaking out a lot of people. But you know what? They haven't come up with any answers for what they have created. It does not collect information only and market to you, which is what a lot of people that investigate understand. Oh, it's collecting information. It's spying on us and it's marketing according to what we say or search. Yes, it's doing all that. It's not going to focus that much on that. So it's not going to be, I'll put it this way, unless you've already seen it, you're going to learn a lot of things that you never thought of that's going on, not that could go on, that's going on. 
You have become the product. You have become the commodity. Humans, for the first time in the history of mankind, and artificial intelligence is extremely important to know, and they make this case pretty well, does not know truth and cannot, and they can't program it to know truth. So it also has become the largest source in the history of mankind, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm taking from their own words, for disinformation. It is the most effective source of disinformation to affect global society in the history of mankind more than a trillion fold. I couldn't remember the number that they mentioned, but I'll just say a trillion fold and beyond. So will it be the total destruction of mankind? Let's get some of their opinions and what they think. You know, this started out to be a help but when they got the artificial intelligence and the algorithms going that create their own ways of accomplishing what they set it out to do, they didn't know the directions that it would take. And it's gone way, way beyond and gotten completely out of control. But what we're talking about is how it is affected, addicted. And yes, you know about the addiction, but you're going to learn why and how. The addiction to society that actually it is purposely, uh, there are governments that use it to manipulate people for very specific reasons. So you can manipulate the entire world. Some people are concerned that we'll end up shortly in a, as a result of this directly, totally, is what they're pointing to. Who? The high tech guys that created it. So a civil war is what one said. One, another one, I, I guess I'm giving tips, so I'll start, stop after this. Another one that is, could end up, if we don't stop this and change the direction, the end of mankind. So I know that it has created a lot of narcissism. You know that. Selfies, everything else. It's created a lot of antisocial stuff and a lot of things that most everybody's familiar with. But I would take a look at this to find out and understand all the things that you don't know about it and how it can control you, program you without your knowledge. You don't think. You say, oh, I'm safe. I'm cool. I'm fine. I'm not addicted. I'm not this, that, or the other. Well, you need to check it out. These guys themselves that program it, they talk about themselves finding themselves addicted to their own programs. Anyway, watch it, check it out. You can give me feedback. So what else we have is how important is health in these times? This is the series that we've been talking about. I've had two lectures on this, physical health, mental health, emotional health, and yes, spiritual health. I'm not blowing smoke. <laughs> but before we get into that, can I get into a couple of questions that were emailed in? This is from Linda. It's mentioned some things that it says, you mentioned stress. Could you possibly talk about in a Zoom class, the connection between organs and emotions? So I could talk about that, but she asked some other, you might say, refined questions for that. I'm assuming. What is the history behind this? So that means organs and emotions. How did Eastern medicine discover this? So can I talk about that briefly? Because that could be a, a long subject. And, and I'd love to draw out all kinds of things, but <laughs> uh, we need more time. So first, in the answer to this, in other words, what is the connection between organs and emotions? What is the history behind this? What did Eastern medicine do to discover this? First, simply cause and effect, cause and effect, like many things we discover. Observation, empirical studies, over generations. What do you mean? Well, you see this happen with this disease, disorder, this ailment, whatever it is, and you see how the emotions change and what's going on, or the emotions change, and then the disease happens. And a, I know I've had people say, I really don't like you saying that, but I emphasize critical thinking. There's not a lot of thinking going on these days, and sense has become uncommon sense. But, you know, the further back you go, I think there was far more critical thinking going on. It is amazing what people have done in the past. Occasionally in classes in the past, I've gotten questions. Do you think people are smarter now or before in history? Well, I'll tell you honestly, right across the board, they were smarter in history. We have become more complacent, more sad. I think it's like some of the cartoon movies that they've come out, how humans have just sit back and become complacent and blow up to be just jellyfied and get to, to the point where they can't even stand up and walk without some kind of help. Because if you just look back and look at the architecture when they did not have computers, 
They did not have drafting boards and, and all of the different things that we have, even in recent history. We're talking thousand years ago, 2000 years ago, even beyond that. And look what they created. If you, I have seen some things on documentaries and history, things that relate to nothing agenda or movies or anything that get into the details to look at what was done, not explaining how they did it. And then it's just amazing. I believe if people were given those tasks now, but the computers and everything were taken away, they simply couldn't do it. They're still baffled about how they did it back then, even with computers. So were they smart? Absolutely, they were smart. They used what I call critical thinking. So you used critical thinking in cause and effect, observation, empirical studies. So now with science, they actually are able to make more precisely trace and track the pathways of energy through the body to see physically the connections to organs, glands, systems in the body, sections of the body, joints, digits, which still match, doesn't contradict with all the old or ancient traditional conclusions that people made long ago from observation, empirical studies. It's just another way of saying observation, cause and effect. So we've proven with science what they knew all along. We did discover some new things, but we did not discover any contradictory things. Something else that might be important to know is what about a spiritual perspective? It's also biblical. If you read in scripture, that's not. Now, there are some things that are elaborated on, altered in scripture, like New Living Versions. Did I say that right? New Living Versions, because I I don't read those a lot. But I'm familiar with a lot of passages in there that... They help people enlighten them the way that it's altered and worded to help bring us some understanding of what's trying to be conveyed. So it has its value. But I'm talking about biblical as in going back to the original text, looking in the sidelines of the side notes and talking about anger, how it affects liver and different things like that or biblical. If you do this, you will have this. If you do this sin, this is the repercussion. This is how it affects your body and parts of your body. This is in the Bible. This goes back to King James and the notes that are in there of the meaning of the original translations. Unless you know the Hebrew and the Greek and read it and see exactly what it says. Because when it's translated into English into King James, they use other words. So that's why you look at the side notes and footnotes to see the original terminology. And it will tell you the same thing. Again, no contradictions. I have seen TKM improve a physical function, but it is harder to see any emotional changes. All depends on the circumstance and the person. Now, if you're the person yourself, it's harder to see those changes unless you're a very sensitive person. Some are and some are not. It also mentions in the DVD, you mentioned doing the nine sequence daily for a whole year to see improvement and letting go. So it must have been the five-day lecture DVDs. But um, yes, I would agree with that. So her question is, does it take longer for emotions to be resolved and why? Well, oftentimes because the emotion was the first thing to go awry. So you're getting back to root. As you have things that have a domino effect and you have the root change here emotionally, just like when you have, if, if you, I'm just, this is off the cuff. So if you get an emotional, somebody pushes your anger button, does that have a spiritual impact? A direct corresponding spiritual impact? Yes, right? It also has a direct physiological impact. It can raise your blood pressure. Extreme anger can narrow your vision, get tunnel vision. All kinds of things can happen physiologically, emotionally, and spiritually. So this is by observation, cause and effect, empirical studies see that these things happen without contradiction. So when you see that you have underlying anger, so there's expressed anger all the time, and there's repressed anger. You didn't see anger, you didn't respond to anger, you didn't say anger words or anger attitude, but you felt it, you held it in. Those are the ones that pay a bigger price for their health than the others on the average. Are there exceptions? There's always exceptions because you stuffed it, you internalized it. 
And that goes against what it says in the Bible as well. Why am I talking about the Bible? Because we have one creator and he created everybody the same by the same principles like everything in creation. So we need to go back to the base of how everything works. So below the energy is spiritual. Spiritual is the foundation of everything. When we're talking about living in this world and living in this temple, our spirit and the other connections, the first base that we see is the energy correlation. And then we have the emotional, the physical, the mental, and they're all intertwined. But the base is the one that is emotional. Remember, spiritual is below that to be the base, the foundation of the root of everything. So it's getting back to the root, uncovering all this muck, reverse action of all these things, like a, a metamorphosis going in the, the wrong direction. And then you do a reversal of the metamorphosis to uncover all that and then get down to the root. Biblically, we would say what? Uh, the term has been used bitter root. It's hard to get a bitter root. If you ever seen a bitter root, there is a bitter root. It's a very gnarly looking thing. So does it take longer for emotions to be resolved and why? So to definitively answer that question, let's say averagely. Averagely, I would say yes, because it is a habit that people get into and people are, they find comfort in their habits and they don't like breaking habits very well. So it's their comfort zone and it's our also programming to react certain ways. And it's harder to address that. I, I think of so many things. One of the things I think of when you talk about human beings, God's creation is God will show himself through a pillar of fire or smoke or whatever it is. He will provide the manna. He will move the seas. He will wipe out your enemies. He will do all kinds of things to show his way. He will provide you water in the desert. And what does mankind do in the next minute? To go back to their same old routine, looking at the moment that they're in and going back to their programming and whining about something. Now they'll whine according to their historical habitual patterns. One person may not whine. Even Moses whined. Didn't he whine? He sure did. Did others? Do you see people in your family, your workplace, friends? Some will do it to more extremes and some will do it to less extremes. Some will be whining and others will be looking over there and saying, so what's the big deal? Roll with it. Roll with it. So when you're looking at all those differences in people, you can't give a pat answer for does it take longer for emotions to be resolved and why? But I give you the explanation of typically why it does, because you got to break the pattern that we create. We, as we grow and we learn, we react to things. And some of this is survival rate. And if, if I had people here for an exchange and interchange, we could probably narrow this down for your particular interest because it's such a vast subject, but I hope you get that. So let me move to the next one. Also, how does this relate to going to God with an anger or fear problem and seeking him for deliverance? Excellent question. I want to join that with the next question. When he provides that deliverance, does that mean that the correlating organ will begin to function better? Can I explain that answer in one word, yes. Let me repeat the question. When he provides that deliverance, does that mean that the correlating organ will begin to function better? Yes. Yes. I hope everybody got that. Also, how does this relate to going to God with any fear or anger problem? The ultimate root is spiritual. So going to God is the most base, the most root, the most center, the most effective, the most encompassing thing that we can do. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions. Does God do miracles all day, every day? Yeah, he does. I don't care what the others say. He does. He is the same. He's always been the same. He is and will be. What changes is man, not God. If you go to God and you ask him about something, and he answers it, his answer is encompassing. His deliverance or his healing is encompassing. It's not compartmentalized. It's encompassing. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, energetically, it covers the basis. But let me also ask you another question for thought. How many people believe that 
If you pray for healing and you submit to the Lord, understanding he is ultimately the healer, capital letter, the only healer, all healing comes from God. I acknowledge that you do TKM and you get healed. I acknowledge God is the healer. What are we doing? Working with the system that he established in the ways that he has revealed knowledge. So who gets the glory? He gets the glory. What do you do if you work with herbs, food, different things, and you get healing? Who created the herbs? Who created the food? Who provided you the knowledge for this? Who gets the glory? God. Please don't get it clouded or confused. There's only one healer. So if you pray for somebody, if you believe in laying hands on, anointing them with oil, COVID or not, and you pray for them, and you pray in the spirit for them, for healing and restoration, and the person receiving that is repenting of sins, and they're asking and receiving, and they're opening their heart to their ability and their mind and all that they are to receive healing. Do 100% of the people that do that get healing? Do 100% of the people get instant healing before you finish praying? No, they don't. Do people get instantly healed before you finish praying? Yes, I'm one of them that that's happened to, that God did it in a way that he revealed to me that no matter what I think, what anybody says, what any interpretation of scripture, what any pastor, priest, or anybody else preaches or teaches, that he revealed he is the source. He is the healer. He knows the beginning and the end. He has it all in his hands. So you can't convince me of something different. If you don't believe that, it's because you haven't found the truth yet. You have a human opinion. Sorry. You can get mad at me. You can get anger. You can affect your liver with that, your gallbladder, your eyesight with that. You can defriend instead of befriend me. You can do whatever you want, but it doesn't change the truth. You can live by another made up truth, but that's the truth. We need to live these days and forget political correctness and everything else. Oh, I see my time is running. So let me address that. So why doesn't everyone get instantly healed when you pray? Because God has a plan. And his plan is not to be a genie in a bottle that anytime you want to rub it, you get your wish in your way. That's not God. God's in control. He's the one on the throne. Maybe there's stuff you need to clean up in your life. Maybe there's things you need to learn. Maybe there's, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to say what it is. I'm not going to say, oh, you, you've got some sin in your life, and that's why you didn't happen. I can't say that. I'm not God. God knows. Ask him why individually for each individual. Ask him. You keep seeking, you'll find out. My point is, you don't get it 100% of the time, like rubbing a genie for him to pop out of the bottle and give you your wish. What does he often do? What did he do with Moses? What did he do with Abraham? What did he do with people all the way from the very beginning? Most of the time, he uses people to get things done. When he wants to help a person, could he pop a house full of gold right down on you? Yes. Could he fill up your bank account with trillions? Yes. He could do all that. That's not how he does it. He does things through people. He provides wisdom and knowledge. He makes connections. He helps the poor person, the beat up person, the ailing person, the raped person by bringing other people around to help them, mend them, minister to them, teach them his truth. He uses people. Why does he say lay hands on the sick? Mark 16, 18. Because it involves one person with another. Why does he say pray for you can pray for yourself and you can be healed. There's no nothing wrong with that. It can be just between you and God. That's all it takes. But there's extra things when other people are involved. That's God's way. So our job, in a word, is stewardship. So understanding all we can about stewardship of why he created us from the beginning, not just before we were born, not just at conception. He created us from the beginning. And then he brought us and put us in your mother's womb at conception. And we are born at a predestined time and place for his purpose, originally to find him and have relationship and to recognize that the world is full of our brothers and sisters and to love one another and to do what he came incarnated in Christ to represent to show us the examples of what can be done because he was all man, all God in flesh. 
and sacrificed for us that we may have salvation, but also provide us the examples of what we're to do in all these situations, a perpetual relationship with the Lord. So if you call those rabbit trails, I like them. So let's get to the next one. I hope my questions are not elementary. No, they're not. I love them. But the study of TKM with the physical and emotional aspects are so fascinating, pointing to the Lord and his creative design. I can never emphasize or talk about that enough. I hope that was helpful and beneficial. This is a mystery that is not fully known. God knows. Everything we discover about TKM, about the energy, about the correlations with emotions and organs, we understand what we understand, but we don't fully understand any of this stuff. We don't fully understand why we don't get healed when we pray and ask. We don't fully understand these anything. But there's always one source to go to, and that's to God. He's got the answers. He can provide those answers. So I always urge to do that. Can I also let you know again about text 71010? Because we are coupled with uh, Gateway Church and 71010, because this was way too expensive for us to do this. I found out. I checked into it. So we coupled with them. 71010 is getting into sources. So if you need prayer, you can text your prayer needs to 71010 and someone will get back to you and will be praying for you. Now, that doesn't come to us here. If you have prayer needs that you'd like to let us know so that we can pray about it or pray with you, please contact us. You know our contact information. Decision to 71010 means that if I have said something or you heard somewhere or just between you and God, you have received Christ, text 71010 to receive helpful tools and directions of what to do after that that will be very, very helpful and connect you in different ways, not to what you don't want to do. It's your choice. It's always going to be your choice. You don't receive God unless it's your choice. Christ, our Savior, which we all need. If you've received him, new or recent, I would suggest texting 71010. Or you want to renew. Maybe it's been a long time. Maybe you've fallen away and you want to renew and dedicate. Same thing, 71010. All the different things that you can be helped by, by people that are loving Christians, not judging Christians, and that you need help in any way, prayer in any way, to let people know for celebrating that you have made a decision, any and all those things can be directed to texting 71010. I really invite you to do that. So that goes into something else. So what I'm going to do here is go. I apologize for that being delayed a bit, but um, if I'm not scripted, I can go on and on and on. I actually try to cut that short. We have ended this part And we're going to go into questions and answers if you have any, and I can elaborate more. And I did not talk much about the uh, series, so I'm just going to put that series part into the next video. It's all the same video here. We're just going to edit this later, cut off with one and start with the other. So for this one, for everybody, goodbye, God bless you, and we'll see you next time.